I talk about how my best friend wants my boyfriend. So this specific girl has been my best friend since fourth grade and I've had a boyfriend for two years now. She's literally the first person I told that I was like talking to him and then from there she went like crazy. In the beginning she was like oh what's his name like I'll like text him on Instagram and see if he is like loyal and all this stuff and I was like oh yeah sure whatever so we went on with it he never answered her but she did text him off a fake account so I thought that was a little weird so move forward to like two months of us dating and she like wouldn't stop asking about him or like every time he would come over she would just somehow appear and be like oh can i come over too and she would like drive past my house like my parents would say oh i saw Wawa driving out front of the house today um is she gonna come over later and i was like oh that's weird because she didn't even mention that to me so i finally like told her to stop coming over when he was over without without asking me because i don't i'm not blowing her off i'm just saying i don't want her to be here unannounced when he's here so then closer to like eight months to a year she started coming over again and more frequently and then after that it was his birthday she got him legos and a like squishmallow and i was like why are you getting him why are you getting him this and she was like oh you can just say it's from you like i got it for you to give to him and i'm like yeah, well, this has been like a year of us dating, so I don't need you to get him stuff. And why do you know it's his birthday? Like, this is the first year of us even dating. This is his first time having a birthday. So uh, she basically chimed in when I, like, was telling him about it. And she was like, oh, yeah, I got that, like, for you. Like, I got that for you because she was too busy. Like, she was at work. And I was like, are you kidding? So, okay, we get over that. We keep hanging out, like, without him. And I'm not putting her to the side. I'm just, like, fed up with what she's doing. So then we move on. We're perfectly fine. She's not doing any more weird stuff. And we're at the summer. And she invites herself over to his house where I am. Because she FaceTimed me. She's like, oh, what are you doing? And I was like, somewhere. She's like, oh, I know where you're at. And I was like, why? And obviously, because we have each other's location. So she came over. But what finally drew me to making this after two years of dating is that is that today is her birthday and she was like oh my god he didn't text me happy birthday like we're friends we should be saying happy birthday but the thing is he doesn't go along with it so they're not like friends it's like one-sided and i've like I don't know how to tell her because we've been friends since like fourth grade second grade even and we're literally seniors now, so I don't know how to break the news to her, but it's fine. So yes, she did see the TikTok of me, and clearly she knows it was about her. She did call me, and she asked me to come over, so of course, went to her house. But before the story starts, I feel like I should give you guys a little bit of a backstory of like what, like what happened the last two days. So the 10th was my boyfriend's birthday, and since then we've had a birthday meetup and i've met with my friend to talk about it so let's just get into that so she saw my tiktok and she called me and she asked me to come over so i did and really what happened is i explained to her like obviously what the problem was she said she understood and that she wouldn't do it again if it could save our friendship because we were literally friends for like ever so we're about to go to college so we decided to like let the friendship see how it goes for the next like month or so so we're gonna move on with that and then it was my boyfriend's birthday party so we basically had a birthday party for him and since he's friends with most of my friends obviously she was there so she was there and a bunch of our mutual friends were there and a bunch of his friends were there like it was just a birthday party and since then she wasn't really like out there like she wasn't as like talkative with him and she was kind of actually awkward so the night goes on we were all at his house like having a party and everything we were all there and it's time to have cake so i'm like oh 
let's go get her. I was like, let's go find where she is now, what boy she's talking to. FYI, the girl in the video before wasn't her. She did comment on my actual post though. Do not mind the tan on my neck. But then I found her like crying in my boyfriend's room with my brother. And I was like, oh shit, like what's going on here? And he was like, I'll just talk to you outside. So we walked outside. And he basically told me that she feels bad and she feels like she ruined our friendship and how she feels as if I didn't give her, like, a warning. How I just ran to TikTok and I didn't even talk to her about her actions and this and that and I was like, girl. So, me being the good friend I was, I walked in there and I was ready to have a chat. She basically said that I publicly embarrassed her, even though no one in my comment section knows who she was. So I explained to her that we're still going to be friends and we're still going to try to see how this works and hopefully it does work this time because this is like my actual last time. So basically at the end of the day, I guess we're still friends. It's still like brewing back up together and my boyfriend, guys, don't worry. He's still my boyfriend. He doesn't like her. Um, he knows that we've been friends forever um, and we kind of share the same mutual friends. Here's my nails, by the way, they're grown out, but it's just a French tip with, um, like, black around the outside. Everyone is always like, oh, I would have kicked her out and done this, but, like, when you've been friends with someone for so genuinely long, it's, like, so hard to stop being friends with them. So we're still going to continue being friends, but this is my verbal commitment to my last chance with her. This is her last chance. Am I in the wrong for refusing to be my friend's alibi so he can cheat on his girlfriend? I, male 21, have known my friend Matt, male 21, since we were in college. We're in the same program and have been roommates since day one. Overall, I'd say Matt is a great guy. However, he has a terrible tendency to cheat. Throughout college, I think Matt had five to seven different girlfriends, and each of those relationships ended because he would cheat. Back in January, he started dating his current girlfriend, Jen, female 21, and has been with her for far longer than any of the previous relationships. From my interactions with Jen, I know she's a wonderful person. She's very polite, beautiful, and clearly devoted to Matt. For the past few weeks, Matt has also developed a close relationship with his anatomy lab partner, Cindy, female 21. It's become pretty clear to me and my other housemates, Kyle 21, Robert 22, Omar 20, that there is some romantic relationship between them. We've even all met Cindy as she came by our house a few times. Long story short, Matt has told me and the other guys that things between him and Cindy are moving fairly quickly and that Jen is completely in the dark about this. He told us that, for the foreseeable future, he'll be spending a few nights hanging out at Cindy's place. Here's the issue. Jen and her roommate don't live that far from us, about a seven minute walk, so there's a good chance that she'll come by looking for him, according to Matt. Therefore, he wants us all to make excuses for his absences and potentially reassure Jen that he isn't up to anything bad. Kyle and Robert are fully on board with this, as they consider it the bro code. Omar is fully against this, and while he's not said that he'd tell Jen, he's just refused to lie for Matt and has been urging him to end things with Cindy. I would say I'm more neutral. I don't think what Matt's doing is appropriate, but I don't think it's my place to tell Matt how to manage his relationships. I told him while I wouldn't seek Jen out and tell her what's going on, I wouldn't lie to her either about where he is and just instead say I don't know. We all argued about this for a while, and the general gist of things is that Kyle, Robert, and Matt all think that I'm being a bit of an ass for not being more cooperative. Aside from this, I don't think there's really much I can do. Moving somewhere else is both economically and logistically unfeasible, so I think trying to avoid stirring the pot is my best bet. I'll start this update by saying that Jen found out last night. Like Matt predicted, she came over to our house Tuesday evening. I saw her pretty quickly since I was also coming back from buying food. She asked me if I knew where Matt was, and I said I didn't know, because I genuinely didn't know at the time. She mentioned how he wasn't responding to her texts and that she was worried about him, and I felt pretty bad hearing that. Kyle, who was inside, came out at this point and said that Matt was in his anatomy lab, and then reassured her that he'd contact her once he was finished. She didn't seem entirely satisfied with that answer, but thanked us anyway and left. Once she was gone, Kyle told me that Matt was actually on a date with Cindy. Since Matt sometimes brings Cindy over, he'll text the house group chat before they come over to ensure that Jen isn't around. He did this on Tuesday night, and Kyle did alert him that Jen had stopped by looking for him, so he stayed over with Cindy on Tuesday night. Wednesday evening, only Omar and I are home. Kyle was with his own girlfriend, and Robert had an exam. Around 7 p.m., we got a text in the group chat from Matt saying that he plans on bringing Cindy over at 8.30 and asked if Jen came by. I told him that I hadn't seen her, and things went on as usual. I'll add that Omar has refused to respond to any specific text messages from Matt, so there was an expectation on me to clarify if Jen was here or not. A little after 8 p.m., Jen comes by with one of her friends, Carly21. They asked us where Matt was since Jen hadn't seen him a lot lately. Before I could even say anything, Omar told them to come back at 8.30 and Matt should be home. They left and I argued with Omar about his decision to tell them to come back since it was inevitably going to cause drama, but he didn't care. I texted Matt and told him about Jen potentially returning, but since he was driving, he didn't read the message. A little after 8.30, Matt walked in with Cindy. And not long afterward, Jen and Carly returned. Long story short, there was a lot of Jen yelling and Matt lying and apologizing. 
I didn't bother to come down since I could hear from my room. About after 10 minutes of this, Jen and Carly left. Matt sent Cindy home after this and was pretty pissed at what happened. I reminded him that I sent a text message, which he now saw, and Omar played dumb, but confirmed to him that he told Jen to come back after the first time she came because he didn't think that Matt was dumb enough to go out with Cindy two nights back to back. Robert and Kyle came home after this point and I filled them in on what happened. There was definitely some tension in the house this morning as Matt thinks that this all could have been avoided if Omar had been more helpful. He also partially blames Cindy for wanting to come over so often. Overall, Matt doesn't really seem to care that Jen found out and broke things off with him. He said that he'll try apologizing one more time and if she doesn't accept, he'll leave things as they are. As for Cindy, Matt has already told Kyle, Robert, and me this morning that he plans on ending things with her after the December exam season. He says that he wants to be single again by New Year so he can have a fresh start. Kyle and Robert think this is pretty hilarious considering how much trouble he got into to be with her. Things have ended more smoothly than I thought, and I've made it abundantly clear to Matt to keep me out of his relationship woes. There's not a cheating story in the world that will ever top this one. And the worst part is, is that I found out that he was cheating by accident. So I was seeing this guy and we were getting pretty serious. Let's call him Jake. Jake was an absolute sweetheart. He would text me every morning and tell me how excited that he was to see me. I always tried calling him, but he only preferred text and hated talking on the phone, which I thought was pretty strange. I should have known that it was a big red flag, but it was a blessing that helped me in the long run catch him. Sorry, I had to do my eyes off camera. I'm not that talented yet but let's continue on with the story. So one morning I get a regular text from Jake, but it was strange because it was a group text and he never sends me group texts. And it said, hey babe. My heart starts pounding really fast, but then I try to calm myself down and I'm like, okay, maybe he meant to send it to his guy friends as a joke. Then I started looking at everyone in the group chat and y'all, that's when I knew. Every single person in that chat was a girl. Yep, these girls were his side chicks. My heart dropped to my stomach and I felt like throwing up. I mean, I couldn't believe it. When you think you know someone so well and then an instant, that's just all thrown away. But I couldn't just sit there and cry. So I decided to text him back because I felt like it'd be so rude of me to leave him on red in the group chat. I played it cool. I acted like one of his side chicks that didn't know there was a group chat. I was like, hey baby, love our date last night. Girl, the drama unfolded. Oh my gosh, when I tell you that the girls in that group chat were going off. Here it gets crazier because when the girls were going off in the group chat, I wanted to formally introduce myself. I was like, hey girls, this is Jake's girlfriend. So nice to meet you. Or should I say e-meet you? Cause it was over text. I tell you, after I texted that, the shock in that chat was palpable. Jake was freaking out and the girls were just as furious as I was, rightfully so. And guess what Jake decides to do? Jake decides to call me. So he calls me, obviously I don't answer. And then he texts me, I can explain. All the girls, including me, left the group chat. And one of the girls in that group chat actually started a new group chat with all of us. So clearly we all became best friends after that. Girls, I'm telling you that sometimes the smallest red flags can mean so much more than they seem. I almost fell with my down school boards because my patient almost didn't show up after I paid her to show up. If you're unfamiliar, we literally have eight boards in dental school. It was on a live patient, so the patient showing up literally determined if you were going to pass or not. The morning of my board exam, everyone is so nervous, everyone's ready, and literally you start drilling at 8 a.m. Everyone's patients start showing up slowly, 7, 7.30, 7.45. My patient, nowhere to be found, and I'm like, it's fine, she'll show up. Now it's like 7.50, my patient's still not here, we're supposed to start drilling at 8 a.m. For this specific board exam, we had three different patients that did three completely different things for us because at this point i'm obviously freaking out i'm like hitting on my patient calling her texting her she's not answering calls are going straight to voicemail the text messages are green nothing is going through all of a sudden it's 8 a.m the test starts everyone is drilling everyone's patients there except for mine i'm walking around like a freaking lunatic in all the hallways looking for her seeing if she's there seeing if she's in the bathroom the board dates were split into like two or three days and i was the first one to go so i was like oh my gosh i'm gonna be the freaking first student to fail and my now husband who was also in the class was on a different board date so i I start calling, texting him, texting my other friends, and I'm like, please help me. If anyone has any backup patients, please send them over like she's not picking up. And my husband was like, okay, don't worry about it. Just leave it to me. I'll figure it out. What you have to do is call your second patient and have her come in early. The second patient was an older Muslim woman. She didn't really know how to drive, so she had no transportation to get to me. I was like, you know what? It's not going to hurt if I just ask, so I freaking call her up at 8 a.m. and I wake her up. She was so cute. Now, mind you, it was Ramadan, so she and myself were fasting. If you're not familiar, fasting just means no food or water from sunrise to sunset. That so poor girl had such a long day ahead of her. Anyways, I call her up and I'm like, girl, please come save me. I really need you. My first patient didn't show up and me passing really depends on you coming early. This patient really loved me. So she was like, Rima, I really want you to pass, but it's just so hard. I have no ride to you right now. We were in Erie, Pennsylvania, so it was snowing. I was like, girl, please, I'll pay you more. I had no money. 
I was a student, but I was like, whatever it is, like name the price and I'll pay you. And I was like, if you absolutely can't, like I understand, but please, 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 if you can do anything. When I was starting to give up, I usually don't give up. Like whatever it is, I'll try to find the positive solution out. But at this point I was like, I have to accept it. I'm probably gonna be the first to fail. The hardest part was everyone around me was like kind of giving me the look like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad for you, but they were still working. And I was just sitting there waiting, like so helpless and I couldn't really do much. All of a sudden, see my board savior just walking through the halls. My Arab old lady starts walking through the halls. She's like, Reema, I made it. She walked, walked in the snow for me while fasting. It looked like five minutes from the school, but she literally walked to me to try to save me. She's like, I had no transportation, but I need you to pass this test. And I tell you, I literally started crying and I hugged her so tight and I'm like, you literally are saving me right now. But fast forward time wasn't on my side, but I still end up passing. Everything was great. And now we're on to the next section of the board. Little did I know while I was completing that first section, my husband somehow got a hold of my first patient. I gave him her number and literally him and my other friend kept spanning her phone until she finally answered. Look at how God works. Turns out she was actually pregnant and didn't know it. Mind you, we're not allowed to work on pregnant women. If she was pregnant and came to my boards that morning and she signed the health papers and she wrote pregnant, immediately she would have been disqualified and I would have been able to work on her and I would have failed anyways. But she was recently pregnant and she never told me she was. The night before my boards, she had a miscarriage. She was in the hospital all night after the miscarriage, but she was thinking about me and she was like remembering that she was my boards patient. But because she was in the hospital all night, her phone was dead. So as soon as she got out of the hospital, she opened her phone, turned it on and read all the messages and missed calls from me. She ends up calling my husband and explaining everything to him. And he's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I feel so bad. And she was like, is it too late? Like, am I able to go to her? I'll still go to her and help her pass. Like, is it too late? And he's like, no, I mean, if you're up to it, she would definitely appreciate if you can go because if you don't go, she's gonna fail her exam. I missed the lines. I swear I always accidentally overlined my lip. About the second part of the exam is about to start and I get a call from the front desk lady and she's like, Rima, your patient's here. I go into the hall and I see her and I'm like, Oh my God, you freaking came. She was still in her little hospital bracelet. She came straight from the hospital to me to help me pass my board. She really started apologizing. She's like, I'm so sorry. I miscarried. I had no clue. I'm like, miscarried? But pregnant? Girl, I can't even work on you with you being pregnant. And she was like, well, when I told you I would do it, I didn't know I was pregnant. And I told her and I was like, if you're too tired and you're not up to it, like I 100% understand you were literally in the hospital all night. She was a trooper. She was like, no, 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 I want you to pass. Like, let's just get it done. Kind of just the way everything worked out in my favor. Like I ended up passing and I ended up finishing before the time right now. I also ended up paying both of my patients extra, so I spent a lot on my board. This story is such a good reminder to just trust in God's plan. As long as you did everything you can to make something work, just leave it all to God and don't be anxious about it because it will work out. A very interesting birth story. So 3 a.m. rolls around. I wake up thinking my water broke. Boom, blood all over the bed. I'm like, what the? Like, wait, this is not good. Everything in our pamphlet said that blood is bad. So I call the hospital and they're like, well, can you feel the baby move? And I'm like, honestly, no. So we rush to the hospital, like, straight panic, which literally the entire time I was just like praying. We were listening to worship music. Josh was going like 100 miles per hour. It was stressful. So when I get to the hospital, they check me back and my legs are shaking uncontrollably. And I couldn't even stop my legs from shaking. Like literally they were going like this. Then when we get there, they put the heart um, monitor on the baby and we hear heartbeats. So I'm like a lot more calm at this point. But then they do an ultrasound and they're like, well, there's a reason for all the bleeding. And we're like, well, what is it? And they're like, well, we have to wait for the doctor to tell you. And I'm like, everyone knows that's bad if you wait for the doctor. And then my husband almost passes out. He literally goes, I hate to be that guy, but I think I'm gonna pass out because he was so worried worried about me and baby girl. Like he, his face was ghostly. Like, I've never seen him look like that in my life. So they finally tell us what it was. It was an abruption in the placenta, which can be very dangerous. So basically they said that they had to monitor the baby's heart rate just to make sure it didn't drop because otherwise I'd have to go in for an emergency C-section. And if I didn't have the epidural, then I'd have to be completely knocked out, which obviously wouldn't be ideal. But I wasn't sure if the baby was gonna like remain okay. So I just kind of felt panicky all day. Little greens break. I know people are gonna ask what greens they are. They are the first form greens. I'm obsessed with them. They're so good. They have like no artificial dyes or sweeteners and they're just so good for you. I highly, highly recommend these. And I'm actually going to the first form headquarters next week. I'm very excited. About it. So anyway, we check into our room and basically the entire day was just a waiting game to see if I was gonna have a C-section. And there was a couple, a few scares in the day, but like now looking back at it, I'm pretty sure a lot of things like this do happen. It just felt so like high stress in the moment. So they start me on Pitocin, but they wanna do it slowly that way. 
I don't bleed too much. And then the Pitocin is kind of working and then they want to amp it up a little more. So then basically they pumped up the Pitocin and the baby's heart rate dropped. So we had to stop the Pitocin and then we had to wait for a little bit. And then they broke my water and I started contracting really, really fast and it was so painful. And then I got the epidural and I've never loved a doctor more in my life. So I get the epidural at this point and I'm chilling. I'm like, okay, you know what? Life is good. And then like a couple hours later, I start feeling contractions again. I'm like, wait, is this normal? Is the epidural wearing off? And then all of a sudden I can literally feel the baby's head like down there in the contractions. I'm like, oh my God, Josh, call the doctor. The baby is going to come out. They're like, all right, you're ready to start pushing. And then about 18 to 20 minutes later of pushing, baby girl literally shot out and unfortunately left your girl with a fourth degree tear. Yeah, that didn't feel good. They literally stitched me up for an hour and 20 minutes. Thank God I didn't feel anything because I did have an epidural, but I did feel the pain after, which honestly wasn't as bad as I would have thought it would have been. That's pretty much my birth story. And honestly, I would do it all over again because I thought it was just such a cool experience. And I got the greatest gift of all, Baby Sky. Theater bitches are some of the pettiest motherfuckers I've ever met, myself included. Like, I'm not even saying, especially in high school because all the theater mommies are still involved and they did not like me. Like, so trigger warning, big forehead, mega mind your business. So my junior, senior year, which I did together, the musical was Once Upon a Mattress. And I played the queen, which is actually fucked up if you know that show. The main character, her only personality trait is being a loud pick me. She's not, she's not a normal princess. She's loud and obnoxious. Hello, hello, <laughs> But the theater mommies didn't like me, so I was never the lead, whatever. In theater, there's a thing called tech week, which which is basically like where you run the show over and over again, make sure you know your blocking, your dances, your songs. Or I had a family trip planned for a while to go to Texas, right? Except the week was tech week. So that's like a big eh. Theater mommies had a fit, director had a fit, but at the end of the day, they were like, yeah, go do your trip, you'll be fine. We'll just have an, your understudy go on for tech week. Whatever tech week happens, I have a great trip in Texas. I come back, we do the sits pro, which is where like you add the band like to the performance. My director was like, the one thing though, is if you go on this trip and you don't know your shit when you get back, your understudy's going on. But like, of course I need my shit because like, Obviously, I know my shit. Like, girl, who the fuck are you talking to? When I got back, my understudy was still reading my lines, trying to memorize everything, like practicing my dances as I'm performing, and it was pissing me the fuck off. I know I know my lines. You know I know my lines. So, like, you're just wasting your time. Like, you're not going on. I'm the queen. Me and this person also had the same gym class. So, like, I was running the track because, you know, I was <laughs> I was also an athlete. Call me Troy Bolton. Me being a petty little bitch, I ran around the track and I ran to where the theater girlies were sitting. And, of course, they didn't like me. And I bent down and I was like, hey, you know that, like, I know my lines, right? Like, you're just wasting your time at this point. Like, I'm like I'm going on. And they're like, hey, you know, better to be safe than sorry. No, see, now you're offending me because the only way that you're going on stage is if I don't know my shit and I don't know my shit. And I was like, okay, well, it's your time, not mine. And I was cast for a reason. Oh, I'm gonna twist it, okay? I am not defending those actions. Like, that was fucked up. Like, I did not need to say that. I was just a petty little angry 16 year old. I was an angry fucking teenager, dude. Go figure. My girlfriend got married to her ex while we were still together. That story time kind of went viral and y'all have follow up questions. So I'm going to answer them while I'm getting ready for work. One of like the main questions that I'm getting is why I didn't drag her from here to Africa when she showed me her ring finger. And honestly, it's not really a complicated answer. It's because I was actually more hurt than I was angry. Like I honestly didn't know how to feel in that moment. So it was like a couple things like I felt I know it's gonna sound kind of weird, but I felt relieved a little bit because it's like, I'm not crazy. Like all the suspicions I had about you while you were in Vegas were confirmed when you finally showed me your ring finger. And then two, I'm just really hurt because now I'm sitting here thinking about all the stuff that you had to lie to me about before you even got to Vegas. Another super popular question that you guys have is where her ex thought she was the whole time that she was living with me. So her ex was under the impression that she moved to Texas for a better job opportunity. We worked the same hours and we were at home all night together. So when she had time to talk to her ex, I have no idea. If you didn't notice from my last story time, I was dumb as fuck at this time. So if you're wondering if we broke up at that time, we did not. So I'm going to pick up from the rest stop. So we were not by ourselves. We actually had a friend with us. And that probably also was the reason that I didn't go crazy on her because I honestly don't really like a whole lot of people in my business. And he didn't know that anything was going on and I kind of didn't want him to know what was going on. He could pick up on a vibe for sure, but I didn't want him to know what was going on. 
but I did ask him if he could ride with me in the front so that she could sit in the back. Like the whole time that we were driving, her and I were both in the front. She was in the passenger seat and I was driving, but I had asked him if he could ride in the front of me because I just, I wasn't in a position to talk to her. Like when she first showed it to me, I just, I didn't even have anything to say. I just was crying. And after that, I just was like, I can't talk to you right now. When we finally got back to Texas, it still wasn't even me that was talking. Like she was doing all the talking. She was apologizing, letting me know that she knew that she was dead ass wrong for what she did. And she promised me two things. She said, one, I'm gonna tell my ex about us. And two, I'm gonna go and get the tattoo covered up as soon as possible. And she did, she did both of those things. So we were together for a few months after that, but I'm about to tell y'all what she did that made it be like the final straw for me. Like this, like this is it, we're breaking up. So after a few months of us being together, she told me randomly like, hey, is it okay if for a couple months I don't pay any bills because I have so much shit that I have to pay for back in New Orleans that I never got to pay because I had to pay like for all the fees for me to move out here. But of course, my spidey senses are telling me that this is not the whole story, that she's not telling me the whole story. So I was like, fuck it, you know what? I'm gonna go through her phone. So I'm going through her phone and of course, she's still talking to her ex-girlfriend. Still talking to her ex-girlfriend. Her ex-girlfriend knows about me. She knows she got the tattoo covered up, but they're still talking to each other like daily. So I come across a few text messages where the ex-girlfriend is kind of expressing that she may want to go back to school or, you know, there are just some things that she wants to do in her life, but they're very expensive. And because she has, I forgot, I think there were like two or three kids. She had like two or three kids because, you know, she has to pay for all this stuff with the kids. She's not able to fulfill her dreams. So guess what my girlfriend starts doing? Sending her money. That is why she had to stop paying the bills because she's paying bills in New Orleans for her ex-girlfriend. If cheating on me wasn't a final straw, giving money to somebody else was. And I know that that's ass backwards, but whatever. The craziest part about this is I never even confronted her about this when I found out, I just broke up with her. I was just like, hey, this is not working out. Where are you gonna live? I actually started talking to somebody else who is now my current girlfriend, but the crazy part about it is my ex ended up going through my phone and reading my text messages between me and my current girlfriend and she went crazy and that was the first time we got into a fist fight because she started swinging on me. So long story short, I ended up getting a job assignment in of all places, New Orleans. And they told me that I was gonna be there for like a month or more. So I told her basically that I'm gonna be in New Orleans for a month or more and you need to find you some place to stay. If you're gonna stay in this apartment while I'm not living here for over a month, you're gonna have to pay all the bills in this apartment, which was great for me because I was living out of a hotel for free and because my job was paying for it and she ended up paying the bills at the house. But I made it very clear that she needed to get out of the house before I got there. And guess who was still there when I got back from New Orleans? Her, telling me that she still wants to be with me. So then I started getting disrespectful. I was FaceTiming the girl that I was talking to while she was living there and I was all loud, on the phone with her all night, doing all type of shit because the girl just would not get out. So finally, I came home from work one day and all of her stuff was cleared out. But like, not like she got out because I told her to get out. She was trying to be dramatic, like, oh, I'm leaving you because you keep trying me by talking to this girl all day. So like in the end, she actually tried to make herself out to be the victim. Like I was just this evil person that was talking to another girl while she was in the house. When you are refusing to move out, I told you to get out. And if you're not gonna get out, then I'm gonna make you uncomfortable. She even had her mother call me and tell me that I shouldn't have gone through her phone. And the last question I'm gonna answer, a lot of y'all who used to watch the TV show that I used to be on, y'all are asking me if it's Amy. No, Amy and I are still together. This is the girlfriend that I had before Amy. If you follow me on YouTube, you know, like it's my ex-girlfriend, 
but I know that a lot of y'all are discovering me on TikTok and you don't follow me on YouTube and you don't watch the show that I used to be on. So this is all news to you, but for people who were part of my previous audience, no, it is not Amy. It is the girlfriend that I had before Amy. This video should pretty much sum up all the drama and questions, but if you have more, let me know in the comments and I'll answer them. Bye!